He is known for his works Democracy in America and the Old Regime and the Revolution. He is recognized for analyzing the living standards and social conditions of individuals in Western societies. He is Alexis de Tocqueville. In the early 19th century, a French aristocrat named Alexis de Tocqueville emerged as a prominent figure in the fields of politics, philosophy, and history. Born into privilege, Tocqueville possessed a keen intellect and a profound curiosity about the world around him. His travels to the United States would prove to be transformative, leading to the publication of his groundbreaking work, Democracy in America. Through meticulous observation and analysis, Tocqueville sought to understand the complex relationship between individuals, society, and the state in Western democracies. Tocqueville's journey to America was a quest for knowledge and enlightenment. He believed that by studying the American system of governance and society, he could uncover valuable insights into the nature of democracy itself. With a discerning eye, Tocqueville examined the living standards and social conditions of the American people, delving into the intricate workings of their political institutions. His observations and reflections culminated in Democracy in America, a seminal work that would forever shape the fields of sociology and political science. But Tocqueville's intellectual pursuits extended beyond the realm of academia. He was an active participant in French politics, advocating for parliamentary government and championing the values of classical liberalism. However, he remained skeptical of the extremes of democracy, recognizing the potential dangers that could arise from unchecked power. Tocqueville's nuanced and complex liberalism earned him admiration from individuals across the political spectrum, as his ideas transcended traditional ideological boundaries. In his later years, Tocqueville turned his attention to the French Revolution, seeking to understand its significance and failures. He argued that the revolution was a pivotal moment in the modernization and centralization of the French state, but its ultimate downfall lay in the inexperience and idealism of its leaders. Through his work on the old regime and the revolution, Tocqueville continued to explore the intricate relationship between history, politics, and society, leaving a lasting impact on the fields of philosophy and historiography. As Friedrich Nietzsche once said, my life will recur in exactly identical fashion. Similarly, Tocqueville's legacy continues to reverberate through time, inspiring generations of thinkers and scholars. His profound insights into the nature of democracy and his nuanced understanding of political processes have cemented his place as a seminal figure in Western political thought. Tocqueville's intellectual journey, marked by curiosity, skepticism, and a relentless pursuit of knowledge, serves as a testament to the power of ideas and the enduring impact of a single individual's quest for truth. Alexis de Tocqueville, a descendant of an aristocratic Parisian family, grew up in a time of political upheaval and uncertainty. His parents narrowly escaped the guillotine during the French Revolution, and under the Bourbon Restoration, his father became a noble peer. Tocqueville attended the Lycée Fabert in Metz, where he received his education and began to develop his political views. In 1839, Tocqueville entered the political arena, serving as a member of the lower house of parliament for the Manche department. He aligned himself with the center-left and advocated for abolitionist views and free trade. Additionally, he supported the colonization of Algeria, a policy carried out by the regime of Louis Philippe, whom he despised. During his political career, Tocqueville sought to establish a young left party that would address labor concerns such as wage increases and progressive taxation. His aim was to undermine the appeal of the socialists and create a more balanced political landscape. However, his position became increasingly difficult as he found himself mistrusted by both the left and right factions. As tensions rose and his political position became untenable, Tocqueville began to search for an excuse to leave France. According to accounts, he was looking for an opportunity to distance himself from the political turmoil and find a new path. The mistrust from both sides of the political spectrum made it clear that staying in France would not allow him to fully pursue his ideals. In the year 1831, Alexis de Tocqueville embarked on a mission to examine prisons and penitentiaries in the United States, accompanied by his dear friend Gustave de Beaumont. Although the purpose of the journey was to study the prison system, Tocqueville's travels took him far beyond the prison walls. He ventured across the vast landscape of America, immersing himself in its culture and society, while diligently recording his observations and reflections. During his nine-month expedition, Tocqueville encountered the diverse landscapes and people that comprised the United States. He witnessed the growth of a burgeoning Catholic middle class in Ireland and the harsh living conditions of Catholic tenant farmers. Tocqueville's writings provided a vivid depiction of Ireland before the devastating Great Famine, revealing both his opposition to aristocratic power and his solidarity with his Irish co-religionists. Apart from North America, Tocqueville also explored England, where he examined the issue of pauperism and its impact on society. He delved into the French colony of Algeria, critiquing the French model of colonization and advocating for a form of indirect rule that respected the different ethnic populations. 
Tocqueville even proposed the implementation of racial segregation as a means of achieving peaceful coexistence between European colonists and Arabs. Back in France, following the fall of the July Monarchy in the Revolution of 1848, Tocqueville was elected as a member of the Constituent Assembly. He actively participated in drafting the new constitution of the Second Republic, defending the principles of bicameralism and the election of the President of the Republic through universal suffrage. Tocqueville saw universal suffrage as a way to balance the revolutionary spirit of Paris with the conservative sentiments of the rural population. As social tensions escalated between the working class and the conservatives, Tocqueville supported the party of order against the socialists. He anticipated a violent clash between the two factions, which eventually erupted in the June Days Uprising of 1848. Tocqueville aligned himself with General Cavaignac in suppressing the uprising, advocating for the regularization of the state of siege and other measures to restore order. His contributions to the Constitutional Commission reflected the lessons he learned from his experiences in North America, particularly in regards to the role of the president and their potential for re-election. Alexis de Tocqueville's travels not only provided him with a wealth of knowledge and insights into different societies but also shaped his philosophical and political beliefs. His observations of America, Ireland, England, and Algeria offered him a broader understanding of democracy, social issues, and the complexities of governing diverse populations. Tocqueville's experiences serve as a reminder that embracing different cultures, advocating for social justice, and finding a delicate balance between order and freedom are crucial in navigating the challenges of daily life. Alexis de Tocqueville, a passionate advocate for political liberty, found himself in a moral dilemma when he was invited to serve as the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Odilon Barrett's government. It was the year 1849, a time of political turmoil in France. Tocqueville, a supporter of Cavaignac and the Party of Order, had always believed in the importance of order for the growth of liberty. During the troubled days of June 1849, Tocqueville made a difficult decision. He pleaded with the interior minister for the re-establishment of the state of siege in the capital and approved the arrest of demonstrators. This active support for laws restricting political freedoms seemed contradictory to his defense of freedoms in his famous work, Democracy in America. Tocqueville, however, saw order as a necessary condition for the stability of French political life. He believed that without stability, true liberty could not flourish. But his support for such laws went against the very principles he had written about. It was a conflict that weighed heavily on his conscience. But Tocqueville's moral compass remained strong. When Louis Napoleon Bonaparte staged a coup on December 2, 1851, Tocqueville was among the deputies who resisted the coup and called for Napoleon III to be judged for high treason. Although he was detained and later released, Tocqueville's opposition to the coup led him to withdraw from political life and retreat to his castle. Joseph Epstein, Tocqueville's biographer, summed up his character by saying, Tocqueville could never bring himself to serve a man he considered a usurper and despot. Tocqueville had dedicated 13 years of his life to fighting for political liberty, and he continued to fight for it in his own way. He spent the remaining days of his life conducting his fight from libraries, archives, and his own desk. In his solitude, Tocqueville began working on his masterpiece, Lanchon Regime et la Revolution. The first tome was published in 1856, but the second one remained unfinished. It was a testament to Tocqueville's unwavering commitment to his beliefs, even in the face of political adversity. Tocqueville's story serves as a reminder that sometimes, in order to uphold our values, we may have to make difficult choices. It teaches us that the fight for liberty is not always straightforward, and that we must constantly reevaluate our actions in light of our principles. Tocqueville's philosophy of balancing order and freedom remains relevant today as we navigate the complexities of modern society. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.